There's a mysterious feature on the moon that science can't explain yet. They are the lunar swirls. Beautiful and strange areas of contrasting light and dark streaks spread it across the moon's surface. What's the best explanation scientists have for them? Can we see them through a telescope from home? I will try to see them today with my big 12-inch Dobsonian telescope. It's not an easy task for sure, but let's find out if that's possible. Twisting and turning across the moon's surface as though painted on with a spray can, lunar swirls are beautiful. Yet a mysterious phenomena that humans have pondered for centuries. This is Reiner Gamma, the most famous of the moon swirls phenomenon. And that's the one I will try to see and share with you. This one is so important and mysterious that NASA even has a dedicated mission just to explore it very soon. It's called Vertex. And NASA will land a rover on the moon to explore it and try to understand this intriguing phenomenon. It will be the first PRISM mission from NASA. PRISM means payload and research investigations on the surface of the moon. But Reiner Gamma, the most famous of the lunar swirls, was seen by some of the earliest telescopic observers hundreds of years ago. At that time, with those ancient telescopes, they thought it was a crater. And it was given the name Galilei in honor of Galileo Galilei, the famous Italian astronomer. But later, with new telescopes and cameras, people realized that it isn't a crater. And it isn't a ray of ejecta from a crater. It's not a ridge. It doesn't cast a shadow. So it must be a very thin surficial marking. And it was renamed Reiner Gamma for the nearby Reiner Impact Crater. This mysterious pattern extends for a hundred miles across the surface. The Apollo mission collected pictures of it. It must have drawn the astronauts' attention for sure, and they photographed it. This is a real raw picture of the Reiner Gamma taken by Apollo 17. Apollo 17 was the 11th and final mission of NASA's Apollo program. The sixth and most recent time humans have set foot on the moon or traveled beyond low Earth orbit. Reiner Gamma is on Oceanus Procellarum, one of the big dark and relatively smooth lava plains on the moon. But what are these swirls? These intriguing bright patterns that snake across the lunar surface coincide surprisingly with magnetic anomalies. Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft has sensed mini-magnetospheres above the stronger magnetic anomalies. This indicates that the local magnetic fields are influencing the Moon's interaction with the high-speed stream of energetic particles from the Sun, known as the solar wind. Therefore, one of the hypotheses is the magnetic anomaly. However, that brings up another mystery because the Moon doesn't have a global, internally generated dynamo field like the Earth. So the existence of magnetic areas on a planetary body that today doesn't have a global field, it's still unknown. But how did these swirls form? There are a few hypotheses. One is that a comet-coma collision produced the magnetic anomaly. Scientists also consider the solar wind shielding, unusual dust behavior, converging plasma, an internal dynamo field in the moon in the past and recently found that the bright areas of the intriguing swirls were a couple of meters lower in elevation, on average, than the surrounding dark marks of the swirl. I can't wait to watch this beauty with you. Let's prepare the telescope. We usually forget about the moon when we first start. We watch the moon because it's the easier object to watch. But then later, when you start to get into pictures and using cameras and so on, and trying to watch other objects in the sky, deep sky objects, it's easy to disconnect from watching the moon, unless you are really passionate about that object, the moon. So what I'm trying to do is to reconnect 
to my origins, to the basics, and to explore more of the moon, like this wonderful feature, and more to come, interesting and mysterious features of the moon that we can watch taking benefit from the power of the Dobson and Telescope and not being limited to taking pictures or watching only deep sky objects or only planets because the moon, when the moon is super bright, we can't see deep sky objects very well because the sky is also super bright and it will be washed out. So instead of complaining about the brightness of the moon, what I will try to do from now is to take benefit of that, to turn a negative thing into a positive thing, because I have a Dobsonian telescope and the power of the Dobsonian to explore deeper the beautiful moon. Okay, let's watch this beautiful object with a six millimeter eyepiece. Wow, this is incredible. It looks like a small fish with a tail. Let me try to show you. Look at him. Now I will try to push even more with this three and a half millimeters eyepiece. Amazing, let's see. Wow, even better. It works, I will show you. Did you see it? Amazing, unbelievable views. Now, I will show you on camera so it gets sharper and then we can process it quickly so just for you to see how beautiful it is with a camera. However, nothing but nothing can replace these views with this height magnification here with a 12-inch Dobsonian, the king. So this is the live view. Now what I'm going to do is to insert, to push this even more. I will insert a 4X Barlow. 4X Barlow from Televu to see what happened. It will be hard. Here. This is the Reiner Crater and this is the Reiner Gamer. Start capture. And bam. There we go, there we go. It's recording a video. Reiner Crater and Reiner Gamma. The swirls. And if you love to watch the moon, click on this video over here to know more about it.